Let's talk about how tornadoes form. Disclaimers. This is based off of my own interpretation of where we stand with tornado research and from my own observations out in the field. This topic is being hotly debated right now and I'm sure plenty of chasers and meteorologists are going to disagree with parts of what I'm going to present. Also keep in mind that these are really complex processes that are not fully understood and there may be wholly different ways to make tornadoes too. But I want to share with you guys a simplified conceptual model here so that hopefully these storms make more sense to you as spotters out there trying to figure out what's going on. Let's start with non-supercell tornadoes. I think this is a lot less controversial. Here are the land spouts I showed you earlier. They usually form when an updraft moves over an existing boundary or front that's hanging out in the environment. And you often get these little kinks in the boundary where they form, which are probably induced by the updraft's low pressure. These spout producing storms have no mesocyclone. There's no deep rotation aloft. The rotation in this type of tornado is coming from ground level on this boundary in the form of vertical vorticity, basically little columns of spinning air that move along this boundary. They collect and get aggregated in these kinks in the boundary. These orange arrows represent surface-based updrafts in the storm. If there's enough low-level instability, you can get some really powerful surface-based updrafts. These updrafts pull this surface-based vorticity upward, stretching it and increasing its spin. It's conservation of angular momentum. You may have heard this explanation before for how tornadoes form, maybe with a spinning ice skater analogy. I think a key part here is that the updraft is usually contracting and getting stretched itself until it withers away. Basically, this is the start of the updraft's dissipation. But as it goes, those upward and rotational velocities get increased as the column gets stretched. The collection of spinning columns of air at the surface aggregates into one big vortex. As the updraft contracts, the stretching continues to increase the rotational and upward speeds, and at some point it intensifies to the level of a tornado. The updraft continues to contract until it basically withers away and our tornado ropes out. The point here is that the process starts at the ground level and builds upward to the storm's base. And it's been assumed by most meteorologists for a long time that non-supercell tornadoes follow a bottom-up process. Here's our December 1 supercell. This storm does have a mesocyclone, a deep, strongly rotating updraft. I think most people are under the impression that it's the rotation in the mesocyclone that's getting tightened into a tornado, and the vortex originates up in the storm's base. It's intuitive because we see rotation in the base first, and then a funnel often appears to descend before we get a visible debris cloud. If the research on bottom-up tornado genesis is the default mode, however, then I think our intuitions here are wrong. Instead, I think there's a very similar process to spout tornado formation underway beneath the supercell. And it's happening long before you see it visibly manifested in the storm's base. Instead of an existing front or boundary at the surface that's providing our vorticity, the supercell is making its own vorticity generating boundaries. The forward flank downdraft and the rear flank downdraft. It's the mesocyclone that's driving these gust fronts and bringing them together. Again, we're starting with a strong surface-based updraft and vorticity along these surface boundaries, which are the storm's gust fronts. Once the meso drives those gust fronts together, the updraft is cut off and it starts to contract. All that spinning air along the gust fronts that was getting dragged in by the inflow collects at the occluded end of our boundary. The occluded boundary and its vorticity gets wrapped up in the updraft where it starts to get stretched. If our low-level updraft is strong enough, and if the supercell aggregates enough vorticity, the updraft will contract and the speeds in the developing vortex increase until at some point we call it a tornado. There's no magic moment where it's suddenly a tornado or when the tornado touches down. The vortex just ramps up at the surface until it starts to kick up more and larger debris. And here's where our tornado ingredients are directly coming into play. We need lots of instability in the lowest levels to get robust surface-based updrafts. That's our zero to three kilometer cape. And we need a source of vorticity. Our shear ingredients like effective storm relative helicity and the back surface winds along the warm front are going to indirectly lead to more vorticity for these storms. So what does this mean for spotters? If you see a well-formed, robust, and persistent funnel cloud, you should assume it's also at least a weak tornado. If tornadoes are forming bottom up and your storm is surface based, something happened at ground level underneath that funnel. Don't call the weather service and make a report like, I'm reporting a tornado, I see a funnel cloud, and Skip says all funnel clouds are tornadoes. No, report what you see, not what you think is happening. Tell them you've got a funnel cloud and whether you can make out anything happening at ground level and let them put two and two together. But for spotters that are doing debris assessment and emergency managers and law enforcement that are monitoring your communities, 
You should be looking for damage in the wake of these funnels. And when you're spotting, watch the ground for the first signs of the vortex spinning up. Don't wait for the funnel cloud to touch down before acting.